hey guys welcome to my first level design breakdown video so this one's gonna be an interesting one i've been thinking for the past few weeks for ways for me to provide some educational content for my channel and not just level design gameplay videos but also talk about level design concepts or ways for you guys to take some inspiration maybe take some ideas for your level design and what better way to do it than to start with a level i made a few months ago and i'm talking about uncharted a stolen fortune so i managed to get a lot of positive comments from you guys and i was really happy with it i'm really proud of this level and i really wanted to discuss it a little bit more talk about my thought process behind it some of the level design concepts i use and maybe provide some ideas that you guys can apply in your level design this is my first video doing something like this but i'm probably going to keep doing this for other levels i make later on so if you have any comments any feedback leave it down below and if you like this type of content please like and subscribe you know i want to try to keep this as relatively short as possible so let's start with the video let's go all right so let's start with the sketch design or the documentation i use for the level usually when i'm making my level designs i like to do this in a notebook first because it's a lot easier to make some iterations or changes so you can do this on the fly too and you don't have to modify a lot of stuff try to keep it in the notebook first and then after you have a better idea of your design you can then move that to photoshop or any other design platform you prefer i do like to use a lot of photoshop so that's my go-to platform and again i'm more of a visual person so i do like to do this this way what you're seeing here uh, this is the final draft of my design layout of the level so it doesn't have to be like this but what i do like to have in my level design sketches is maybe some of the objectives that you'll see in the level maybe some of the enemy encounters that will be in the level or maybe some collectibles you know collectibles maybe are not as important as the enemy encounters but it gives you an idea of where something might be in the level while you're building everything up you know so again all this stuff can change on the fly so keep it as simple as possible and that way you don't have to worry about changing a lot of stuff and this will happen you know you're gonna have to change a lot of things while you're working with the level so if you're also collaborating with a team getting some feedback from people in the studio among other stuff that would happen a lot so for this level the player stars right at the bottom what it says intro bazaar market district and they have to go all the way to the top where it says the dog combat encounter so that's basically the final encounter where the player must eliminate all the enemies in order to complete the level there's a lot of information here a lot of narrative happening in the level some collectibles and stuff but don't worry because i'll explain everything while we're playing the level so something important you should know from this level is that I build it while having a structure in mind. First, I wanted the player to explore a little bit more of the environment and learn more of the narrative while having some backstory before going into the action or the combat. So that's why I have the bazaar and the market district. I'm providing some agency to the player and they can learn a little bit more of the story, hear some of the NPCs and watch cinematic for example so after the previous exploration segment i wanted to have the first combat encounter and for this one particularly i didn't want this to be very challenging for the player my goal with this was to show some of the gameplay or environment mechanics that the player can use to defeat the enemy also before having this encounter i'm using some back gating or valve and we'll talk a little bit more about this level design concepts later in the video after this combat encounter we have another exploration segment and with this one i wanted to provide some environmental storytelling add some collectibles and have more narrative to the main story of the level so that the player knows that they're making progress and they're close to reaching the goal of the level and this is really important you know we want to keep the player motivated at all time until they complete the main quest or the narrative to conclude the level I want to have a final combat encounter and this is the decisive encounter for this one it's really important to challenge and make them use some of the previous mechanics they already experienced and learned throughout the level 
We'll talk a little bit more about the gameplay and environment mechanics that the player finds through the level. Right before having the introduction of this final encounter, I want to have another back gating or ball. So, after clearing all the enemies in this encounter, the player is able to find the treasure you know, and basically complete you know, the main goal or the objective of the level. For me, it was very important that the player is able to find this chest and to provide a final cinematic or a cutscene because I wanted to reward them with something and provide some satisfaction to you know the player after having to deal with a bunch of challenges through the level. And now that you have a better idea of what the level is about, let's jump right into the gameplay. So I'll be playing the level and talking a little bit more about the level design concepts that I mentioned before and more of my thought process behind the level. Let's go. From the start of the project, I wanted to design an immersive and narrative experience similar to what Uncharted does. So by having this in mind, I start implementing this simple text right before the level start just to give some backstory to the player and introduce a little bit of the narrative and the motivation of the player and why they are here. The level begins with the introduction of the bazaar and the market district and I wanted to evoke curiosity here so I start by making the walls at the beginning as you see here as a way to funnel the player towards the market so I try to make them as tight as possible in order that it can guide the player towards the market at the end. And this is a technique or a concept that we level designers use to guide the player to a specific point. And I'm talking about a funneling or a pinching technique. So essentially, this gives the player a single path. So for example, we can make a really narrow or tight space like you saw there, and then we can exit to an open space, which can give the player a sense of relief. For me, this was important because it ensures that the player doesn't get lost or confused on their way to the first main objective of the level, which is to reach the bazaar or the marketplace. And in this marketplace, players can explore, engage with multiple NPCs, search for clues, and also listen to dialogues to learn more about the narrative. And that was really important for me, you know, that, that was one of the main things I wanted to do in this area, to provide agency to the player and give them some freedom to explore and learn more about the narrative. I try to use audio cues and leading lines to keep the player investigating around and progressing forward. And I also use the buildings as leading lines to make the player continue exploring while also guiding them to the objective. And I just mentioned leading lines and these are elements that help direct the player's eyes to a specific location, item, or maybe an event in order to guide them in the right direction. And we level designers use this all the time. I mentioned at the start that I wanted to focus on a narrative in this level. And I also wanted to have some cinematics or maybe small cutscenes as you see here. And the purpose of this is to push the plot forward and give narrative context to the gameplay, which is really important in narrative experiences like Uncharted 4 or maybe The Last of Us. So aside from just having simple gameplay, this also provides more narrative context and increases the motivation of the player to keep progressing forward. So here, the player tries to open the gate, but it's closed, so they must look for another way to continue. And this is the perfect moment for me to start introducing some of the traversal mechanics, in this case, the bolt. And I'm using the yellow color here to indicate the player that they can bolt, so it's an easy color to identify and to recognize. And other games uses the same idea and same concept, but with a decal or maybe another color. In this hallway, the player can find dead bodies of the local militia, which are one of the main factions in the level. And this was very important for me to add because of the narrative that it conveys and the importance of the environment or storytelling. So I wanted to show the player not only by some dialogue, but also like a visual representation of how dangerous these mercenaries are and that the player needs to be careful while moving forward. Again, right here, you can find a dead body of a local militia with a gun nearby. And I could have given the player the weapons right at the start of the level, but I wanted the player to find them, you know, and what better way that having a dead body by its side 
so that the player can collect the weapons but have an idea that you know there might be danger ahead but now we're heading into the warehouse which serves as the first combat encounter and the first time the player is facing the mercenaries so right there just like i mentioned before in the design sketch i wanted to have a valve or back gating section and that jump right there serves as a valve for the player so the player is not able to go back since this is the first time the player is encountering enemies in the level i wanted this to be simple or at least pretty easy and not a challenge for the player because i wanted the player to get comfortable with the environment and gameplay mechanics first before providing some challenge so right over here the player encounters an explosive barrel and this is one of the environmental mechanics that I wanted to make for this level. And the player can use it to eliminate a group of enemies like you saw over there. But that one specifically, it's more like an introduction to this mechanic. Which I showed it to the player, or I gave it a glimpse to the player right before in the bazaar. But this is the first time the player can interact with it and can practice with the mechanic. While the player is exploring the warehouse, you can notice that there are multiple entrances and ways to eliminate the enemies. Like the player can be stealth or he can just use a gun and eliminate all the enemies. And my goal with this counter specifically was to provide verticality and incentivize player exploration. You know, like not only provide a single way to complete this encounter, but give multiple options to the player. So now let's head into Photoshop to analyze this area and talk about the multiple entrances and routes the player can take. All right, so the player is going to start right here on the right side after the bulb, and they're going to take cover behind these crates. They have multiple options here, and I did it on purpose. So I wanted to give the player freedom and the option to choose where to go and to analyze the encounter before going into action. So let, let's say they decide to go into the right side. They're going to find a cover right here and there will be an enemy that's going to be patrolling right over here behind the car. If they decide to go into the right side, they can just eliminate that enemy from here and the player can continue behind the car and go inside the warehouse. If they decide to go to the left side, which in my opinion, it's more probable that's what's going to happen because there's going to be an enemy right here not facing the player and for me, uh, this is like an easy kill. So you want to give the first enemy, you know, this is most of the time or generally you want to give the first enemy like a free kill to the player so they have an idea of what they are facing and it's also like a reward you know you're you're making you're giving a reward to the player that, like this is the first enemy it's easy to kill but get ready because there's going to be challenge ahead so let's say the player gets into the left side so once they go here and eliminate this enemy they have the option to go inside the crates and just eliminate the other enemies that are waiting here by the uh explosive barrel once that's done, they have the option to go inside the warehouse right over here downstairs, or they can climb these uh, crates and go into the second floor of the warehouse. Again, providing some verticality and freedom and options to the player. So once the player gets inside the warehouse, there are going to be multiple enemies on the first floor and on the second floor that will be patrolling or waiting for the player. There's going to be an enemy upstairs right here. And there's another one that's waiting inside this small room to the left right here. Let's say the player starts by going through the first floor. They have the option to eliminate this enemy in the middle, which will be patrolling, or they can just ignore that enemy and go inside this small room right here to the left. And if they decide to go from the second floor, they can eliminate the enemy upstairs, jump down, and then eliminate the other enemies from downstairs. So again, giving freedom to the player, Giving them multiple options is what makes this encounter memorable. My goal was to make it different from the last big encounter, and I'm going to explain that a little bit later, why they're different. But this one, I wanted to focus more on verticality, introducing some gameplay mechanics, and giving the player options when dealing with the mercenaries for the first time. So now, let's jump back to the gameplay. So now the player is heading into the second exploration segment in the level. And just like I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted to focus more on environment or storytelling, maybe add some collectibles, and add more to the narrative of the main story of the level. The so, 
right here i have a hidden collectible that the player can find if they decide to explore so again giving freedom to the player uh, with this truck right here i use it as a leading line in order to keep the player moving forward here i wanted to introduce the other enemy faction i've been talking about from the beginning of the level and these are the local militia so my goal was to show the player that neither the local militia nor the mercenaries are friendly and this section also serves as another environmental storytelling scenario. And for the player to escape, they must climb some ledges, which I'm identifying with a clear color and it serves as a cordon, as I mentioned before. So once the player climbs the ledges, they can see the city from behind and this serves as a vista. Vistas are observation points at a level that provides players with views of interesting and captivating landscapes and this also gives the player an idea of what they have achieved so far in the level so with this cave i wanted to evoke emotions to the player so my goal was to make it feel as claustrophobic and anxious as possible so th that's why i try to make it as enclosed and tight so that the player can have those emotions after escaping the cave the player is now more in an open space so this is more relaxing to the player maybe they feel a lot more safer here and that was my goal you know it's like the opposite from the previous space if the player decides to keep exploring they're gonna find this lookout right here and my goal with this area was to help the player stay on track and you know maintain a strong sense of direction and remain focused on the goal of the player so you can see here I have a huge uh, ship and this is like a landmark. This is the main landmark of this area. Same with the lighthouse in the back. And I just wanted the player to take a look at the objective, know that they're in the right direction and then make the player keep moving forward. This area also serves as a beast. And for me personally, this is one of the areas that I enjoy the most building. I had this idea I don't want to say from the beginning of the level, but really close to the start. You know, I, I wanted to make like a beast like this where you could see a huge landmark and have an idea of maybe what the last encounter might be and provide the player a strategy right before going to the final battle. I mentioned before that I wanted to deviate the player to a side path. And in the previous lookout, I wanted the player to have a B side encounter. Now, in level design, there are multiple path junctures you can use. Some of them that I can mention are continuance, deviation, which is the one I just used, redirection, reversal, termination, and dissolution. So you as a designer have to decide which one you want to use that works best for your level since each one has their own purpose in level design. Always a cramped cave to squeeze through. Can't catch a break, can I? Same as the previous cave. I wanted to make this one a little bit more constrained and make it as a tunnel you know where the player could feel claustrophobic inside and wanted to make another path juncture concept as i said before but this one is going to have the right path and the other one could have maybe a challenge or maybe a reward i decided to go with a reward in this case i implemented a collectible as you can see there at the end and there's another beast up. specifically this collectible it is a challenge to the player the player has to jump and has to time the, the jump in order to reach the collectible. And I want it to be like that. I want it to be a challenge. It's not an easy collectible. You know, I'm challenging the player. It's not just go there, grab the collectible and go. No, you have to jump correctly in order to grab the collectible and leave with its item. You know, sometimes it's good to give a challenge to the player and not make it simple. You want to challenge the player, make it different, make it interesting so that they can get motivated and you're basically rewarding them for successfully completing that task. While building the level, I knew I wanted to implement more traversal mechanics in the character. This character controller already had the character movement and the ledge climbing mechanic, but I wanted to do something myself. So I ended up programming a simple sliding mechanic, which I was able to use in the level. And this is the first example of this mechanic. You know, I didn't have a lot of time to implement more sequences like this around the level, but, you know, I was able to do it right here. And if I was going to do it later again, I would have added maybe a bridge here that it breaks when the player is crossing 
instead of just jumping down so that's another iteration i could have done here uh but again i'm really happy with how this came out and the way it looks you know i ended up programming this simple mechanic just so the player could have a different experience there's the chest and now we are in the final combat encounter of the level and the first thing i do as soon as the player reaches this area is to provide a glimpse of the chest at the end as you can see there and this is basically to show the player that they reach the final location this is the goal area in the background you can also see the lighthouse and the ship that i previously showed to the player and both of them serve as landmarks to the player how do we know those two are landmarks well if you compare these two locations to the other buildings in the environment they have different shapes and they are substantially bigger so that's how you want to think about it if you want to do landmarks to guide the player to a location You can also notice here that the player has a ledge in front of them and this is what prevents the player from going back to the previous section so this is basically the bolt so i noticed when i was starting making this encounter right here that if i didn't make something like that the player was gonna camp and stay at the top of the ledge from the entire encounter and i didn't want that to happen so i try to think of ideas of how i can make this different and that's why this encounter is a little bit different compared to the first one. So in this one, I wanted the player to feel vulnerable by not taking cover and reaching high places. But at the same time, I also wanted them to have multiple paths to transition around the map. And if the player wanted, take out everyone in the stealth. You can also see here in this area, more of the explosive barrels. And this is more of a mastery compared to the first encounter. You can see more explosive barrels here. And if timed correctly, the player can eliminate big group of enemies at the same time. So it's more of a decision to the player if they decide to go more a stealth or if they just decide to start shooting and eliminate all the enemies the same way as I did here. And again, the goal of this is to provide agency to the player and make it their decision. You know, they are the ones that decide how they want to take this encounter. So now let's go into Photoshop again to analyze this last encounter and talk about the routes and the multiple options the player has when dealing with the enemies here. All right, so here we have a top view of the map and the player is gonna start right here on the right side. And just like I mentioned before, with this encounter, I wanted the player to have multiple paths to transition around the map and also have the freedom to take out the enemies in whichever play style they prefer. So compared to the first encounter, this is more of an open space. You know, you don't have the, the huge warehouse or the doors or the windows. You know, here you're a little bit more exposed and you have to think about how do you want to take the enemies. So I'm providing the freedom here that if you want to go to the right side, you can just hide behind these containers, wait for the patrolling enemy to get there and eliminate them. Or if you want to go into the left side, you can just jump into this container, go behind the car, hide over here, Maybe explode an explosive barrel right here on the left side or maybe take this barrel right here in the middle. You know, I'm giving more options and the main focus here is just how open this space is compared to the first encounter. Another thing that's really important is some of the feedback I receive after finishing this encounter is maybe add some verticality. And if I want to, you know, make some iterations later on, I could probably make some second floors right here in this warehouse or another one right here and make the player go there and have i don't know like a special enemy there that the player has to take out or maybe a weapon there the player can collect and take out some enemies so those were some of the ideas that i was thinking after finishing that encounter and another thing that i wanted to have here but i didn't have the time was maybe have a boss fight so i was considering to add maybe a helicopter where the player could have a cinematic experience and fight the helicopter. But again, because of the time, I was a little bit limited and constrained here, and this is what I was able to create. But it was a fun experience, and I learned a lot through the process of building this encounter. So now, after clearing the enemies in this area, the player can run to the chest and collect its treasure. For this one, I wanted it to have an open ending. So they can here. think of maybe a possibility of having a second level later on, 
or maybe something else happens in the narrative so i try to make it as open as possible and i don't know maybe what if i could get motivated later and do like a second part so that's what i wanted to achieve here in descending and that was like my goal when i was designing this cutscene right here thank you so much for watching this design breakdown till the end like i mentioned at the beginning this is the first time i'm doing something like this so if you have any feedback or any comments leave it down below and if you want to see more about this level design projects i make and more analysis you can check out my portfolio in the description below feel free to let me know what you think and i'll see you next time